<laughs> Last video, Hugh Jackman, Maroon 5. This video, how do you handle missed promises? You have a friend who promised you something and they couldn't deliver. How do you handle missed promises? This is Reed Mahako from readaboutsex.com and I'm Kathy Martelli from intimacydojo.com. That is true. That is correct. Last time I checked, that is exactly who you are. Yes. All right. So a friend promises you something and then they can't deliver. Um, I think part of it for me depends on if it's a little promise or a big promise and if it was made over a, repeated over a long time okay. or just like one give time. Me the, give me the, the worst case scenario. Um, Promised over time. Um, big deal. Yep. And then all of a sudden it's revealed that they, they and let's assume this was all done in good faith, mm -hmm. they cannot fulfill on the promise. They were mistaken. Um, there's a lot of feelings about that sure. for me. Like if I'm trusting someone, I'm, I'm basing my decisions on their assurances. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it makes it really can shake the relationship. Okay. But let's assume, let's assume good intentions and in good faith mm -hmm. and feel free to leave comments about this one. This is a deep one, right? Um, they were wrong. I, well, we talked about restitution in the last video. Okay. They try to apologize and make up for whatever they can. Okay. Well, now let's, because we'll stack the deck in this situation, let's assume that the thing that they promised, there is nothing better than more than five tickets was the last video. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, for them. There's nothing equal or better. There's nothing equal or better than you promised them something that, that was so big for them. Mm -hmm. And they, and then it, it motivated them for all this other stuff. The, the example was there was an exchange of, of services for this promise, or at least emotional services. So, and there's nothing better than Maroon 5. Even a weekend in Paris with Hugh Jackman wearing no shirt for one day was not better. <laughs> so, so the person in the situation mispromised what they thought they could provide. Mm -hmm. Kept reassuring them, mm -hmm. building up the tension, the juicy, delicious tension that people love to roll around in, and yeah. then it was not possible. Yes, and in this scenario, we're not allowed. We cannot get more than five tickets. Ever. The band is broke up or whatever. Yeah. Please don't break up. Yeah, we, but we like you. Um, so, what can you do? And we were talking about restitution, and there's nothing that's as good or better than Maroon 5 tickets ever. So, and now this video is focusing on, so what they promised, they they meant well and tried, but they they mispromised. They were wrong about what they were capable of. Right. How do you, how do we handle that? So, and, and these scenarios also that there was good exchange of effort. So, I agree to help you get your house ready for sale. We're going to scrub it top to bottom, spend a really big weekend. And you're going to re reward me with room five. five tickets. And I've gone through and scrubbed the house. And I killed myself 12 hours a day, three days. Yep. The house looks perfect. I've the done all the work. Carrot that was dangled in front of me. The, the no maroon five tickets. Okay. So the effort was already put in. It's been used. The house was sold or whatever. Like one side got the value out of the exchange and the other side hasn't gotten. Got it. Perfect. So now what? I well, so there are no more than five tickets, but there might be something that add up to the emotional equivalent of that. Maybe you okay. can give five things that add up to that, or you can look for things to exchange that for. Okay. And 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 what if for that person, like there's they just like there's nothing that can add up to that. Like I. If you can't give it to them, maybe they need to be mad at you for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you kind of have to show up for that unless it starts becoming abusive because you did let them down. Um, but I think it may be after a little while they're like, okay, I'm not okay with that this happened, but maybe if we did this and this, that would help make up for it. Mm -hmm. So my take on this and why Kathy thinks that I just absolve people of responsibility is – having grown up in an alcoholic family mm -hmm. where people and, and with a parent that lied and made a lot of promises that were never delivered on. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure there's a psychiatrist watching who's like, Oh, this is rich. <laughs> Just let me get my hands on. Reed and Halco. <laughs> my 
coping mechanism is that people aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. People make do a lot of stuff with good intentions, and sometimes it doesn't work out. So that's that's a founding principle of mine. Mm -hmm. I assume people are doing the best they can, and that that not everyone will be accurate or be able to judge where they are in the future. That is why me personally, and some people get pissed at me about this, I don't do a lot of promising for things in the future. No, and you tend to, if you have an exchange, you tend to make the other person deliver before you give. Yeah. But then if it's if it's already been... And I'm usually really good at my self-assessing what I'm capable of. Because when I look at my life, there are certain things I can kind of promise as like a, yeah, we'll see, or odds are. Now, odds are, some, not people, a promise. some people take as certainty. And then when odds work out that it's not happening, they feel robbed. And so this is just very tricky. However, if you're going to barter services for services, I do recommend that you try to be as accurate as you can with what you want to do, under promise, over deliver if you can, but have other people do their thing first. Because when you do stuff first and then they never show up, mm -hmm. it's tricky. But then if they do all their stuff and you can't show up, yeah. that's a really tricky place too. Yeah, and there's a conversation about, hey, while, and this is what I would advocate for, when you're negotiating stuff, it's like, hey, what are your thoughts on and how do we handle if stuff falls apart? I tend to like to get into relationships slowly and do small exchanges back and forth first. Um, but even then, that doesn't guarantee that someone's going to show up for what they promised. No, and when you build things small, people feel comfortable making bigger and bigger promises. Mm -hmm. And at some point, people reach promise overload where they, in a, they're excited, they're in good faith, whatever happens, they promise something and it's not possible. And, and that's human beings tend to get excited and try to like pull off great feats for each other. How do you handle when those great feats don't don't work out? And it's this is not an easy conversation to have with people. And most people never have this conversation or never grew up in families that really talked about disappointment. Mm -hmm. So most people don't even know where they stand on these things. All they know is that they've been disappointed and because of their how their life unfolded, they don't have any tools to handle it. Mm -hmm. And then they went in good faith and provided all this house cleaning mm -hmm. and scrubbing. And then you, your house sold and I didn't get to see Maroon 5 mm -hmm. and fuck you, Jackman. Right? Like, so then it's like, Sorry, you. which is a conversation about that's not fair. Mm -hmm. So talk, it's not equal either. Talk to people about their ideas on fairness because you may, you may have mismatched ideas of fairness that if you talk about them sooner than later w might indicate where there's a problematic, like a landmine that both of you could fall on. And this is, again, like we're stacking this analogy as crazy as it is, is that there was nothing more important than Rune 5 for mm -hmm. this person. I bet if they like had kidney failure, donating a kidney would beat Rune 5. If, but what if the person is not a match? It's true. Then it's like, like, like so, so when you're in a situation where there's a no win situation, how do, how do the people involved handle it? And this is where it's really deep, like relationship dynamic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and this is business partners, lovers, like it, it's all kinds of relationship stuff. It's not just romantic relationships. So think about what your needs are when people disappoint you or can't fulfill on things and how you navigate that so you can start the conversation with other people. So, you know, and again, like the thing that you think I just, I just absolve people of, for me and the way that I look at it is, okay, so what's actually going on here? And when we, when people take, can work through or remove or, or, get on the other side of the emotion, what's the intention? What's the shared intention? And then what are we actually trying to accomplish? Which some people think is heartless because they're like, Reed, you're just, you're getting, you're getting down to like 
back to the work and not like seeing my emotional stuff. And then this is me is I'm like, well, I can see your emotional stuff, but what's going to happen right now is I can't get you those Maroon 5 tickets. So until that is handled by you, I don't know that like I'm, I'm, I will be the bad guy. I am the person who didn't give you Maroon 5 tickets. Or Hugh Jackman. Or Hugh, or Hugh Jackman. So. I would have taken that trade. You would have taken Hugh Jackman. But that's because you're actually not a Maroon 5 fan. I love Maroon 5, no, but I, not really, I'm a you're bigger not Hugh Jackman fan. You're not like me. Yeah. We'd love to know what you think. It's a really tough discussion. And if you care about the person and you want to continue a relationship, I mean, some people would end a relationship at that point. Like the person has let you down, not big, that big a deal. Um, but if you have a good relationship overall and you want to stay in that, how do you move forward if you can't have restitution on something? There you go. Leave some comments. Sorry for the long videos. Hopefully that's, these were, this was a big concept and we just wanted to talk about Hugh Jackman. We may have just lost the Hugh Jackman with my shirt. No, you had me at Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, Sex Geek. If you would like to continue with the brain sex, do me a favor and click subscribe right here. If you'd like to watch me on social media, that's where you're going to go. Next video, maybe? And if you really would like your own Sex Geek t-shirt, please click right here, right now. Boop. N no, no, really, like...